Let me show you how to install and use OpenAI's CLI tool Codex. Before we can install Codex, you'll need to have Node.js installed on your system. So you'll need to go to nodejs.org and go to the download tab to actually download the installer for your particular system. I have a Windows system, so I would download the Windows installer. But once you download the installer, it's pretty simple. You can just go through that setup process to set up the Node.js environment on your system. Once you have that downloaded and installed, you'll want to open up your terminal. To do that, you can either hit on Windows machine, hit your Windows button and type in CMD to use the command prompt. If you're on Linux or Mac, you can use the terminal. I like to use WSL for development or Windows subsystem for Linux. So I'm going to be using that terminal as I go forward. Next, you want to check to make sure that you have node installed. So I like to run node dash dash version and then hit enter so that I can see that I have a version number here. If you get an unknown command error, that means you didn't go through that install process and it's not noticed seeing that you have it installed. You'll want to just make sure that you get an output of a version number when you run node dash dash version. Now here's the simple part and how to actually install Codex. What we want to run is one command and that's npm install dash g at openai forward slash codex. What this will do is it will install the codex CLI tool globally so that we can run it anywhere within our terminal. So once you have that written out, go ahead and hit enter. Now it should finish and add a bunch of packages and now we can actually use the CLI tool. But wait, we first need to add an API key as an environment variable on our system. To do that, we gotta go to the OpenAI platform which is at platform.openai.com and you'll need to log into your account. Then from there on the left-hand side, we can navigate to API keys and it will bring us to this page. Now you may not have any API keys created and you'll have a green button here to create a new secret or you can click the green button up here to create a new secret key. When we click this, we'll get a menu that we then can fill out a name for this key. I'll call mine the OpenAI Codex key, but you'll wanna name this something that's relevant to what you're gonna be doing. So if it's a particular app that you're working with, you might wanna name it that that or something that you can just identify clearly, at least from a billing perspective, what's costing you money. Then we select project and by default, you'll have a default project. Otherwise you can select the custom project that you're working with. You wanna make sure that you have all permissions checked and then you can hit create secret. Now from here you get a key generated and you'll have to make sure that you hit this copy button because otherwise you'll have to do this whole process again. Once you close this panel, it goes away forever. So you'll never be able to get this key back. You'll have to delete it and create a new one. So we'll hit copy and make sure that we have that on our paste bin and then we'll hit done. Now we'll go back to our terminal and we'll have to set this key. Now, since I'm using Linux, I can use the export function in order to export this key as an environment variable. If you're on the Windows PowerShell or command prompt, you'll wanna use the set keyword in order to set the environment variable. Now the name of the environment variable is openai underscore API underscore key. And then you'll need to set that equal to what you have on your clipboard just paste it in here. Also, don't worry, all of these commands that I'm running are in the description. So if you get lost, you can always go to the description to copy a command that you might have missed. So once we set that environment variable, we can go ahead and run the Codex CLI tool. All we have to do is type in Codex and then hit enter. Now, if you're not in a folder that has get initialized, you'll get this warning message saying, hey, you might be changing something and then you have no version control for those changes. So it's just asking you, do you want to continue if you don't have that version control system. I'm actually gonna say no right now because I do want that version control available to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna create a codex app folder and then move into that app folder and then run git init to initialize a git repository inside of that folder. Now that I've initialized the repository, I'm gonna run the codex again. So now that I have codex running, I can do a few different things. The first thing is I can run the help command. This shows me all of the available commands that I can run as well as the keyboard shortcuts that I can use. And to get out of it, we can just hit Q or escape. So by default, the model that is available to you is 04-mini and the approval settings are always on suggest. If we want to change either of those, we can type in each one of those as a command. So model, I can click as a command and then I get a choice of a bunch of different models that OpenAI gives to us. Now for this tutorial, I'm going to keep it on 04-mini because I think it's a, a decent model to use for this coding example. We also have the approval settings set to suggest. I'm going to check this to full auto now at suggest or auto dash edit, what it's going to do is it's going to prompt you and say, do you want this action to 
go through? Do you want to allow these changes to be made to files or allow these commands to be run? Now I'm gonna set it to full auto so we can get through this quickly and I don't have to you know, wait for these changes to go through. But more than likely, you want to keep it at suggest because you want to be auditing what the AI is putting into your application. So now we can send in a message to actually make the AI do something. So I'm gonna ask the AI to create a React web app with Shad CN that is a to-do app with persistence. And let's just see what happens. Now I'm gonna skip through all the time that it takes to create the whole application and all the files files and folders and everything so that we can see the end result. So once we have our message here, we can just hit enter and let it run. One thing that I do want to mention while this is running is that this is costing money. It's costing API credits. So if we go back to our OpenAI platform, we can see that we're costing some amount of money to this Codex CLI tool. Now, albeit it is a smaller amount of money than something like the Claude Code interface by Anthropic, but it is worth mentioning that you do need to supply your account with with credits in order for you to be able to use this Codex CLI tool at all. It's also worth noting that your organization needs to be verified in order for you to use any of the OpenAI models. To do that, you can go to general and then there should be a button here to do the verification process, which just verifies that you are a human and you are allowed to use any of the models that OpenAI offers. All right, so it looks like it finished and it's telling me that I can now run the application with NPM run dev. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that. I'm gonna quit out of Codex by hitting Q and then hitting enter. And then I'm just gonna paste that in and run this npm run dev command. And then automatically it opens up my browser to the to-do app and now let's see if it actually works. So let's add a to-do. I'm gonna say make a video and I'll hit add. Uh, we, all right, we can see that we have this make a video and this looks like a check mark saying that it's done or not. And I can also delete it. Let's add another one. So I added another one saying post about my video and let's delete the original make a video because that's that's kind of what I'm doing right now. Okay, cool. It looks like it deleted it pretty easily. I'm going to click delete on this one and immediately it goes away. Looks like it did exactly what I wanted it to do. This is actually pretty amazing. I know this is a simple example, but just think of the possibilities that you could do. You could also run this on your local app that you might already be working on, not just create a new brand new app. You could do things like review your code, add comments, maybe add documentation to it, things that are just kind of stuff you don't really necessarily want to do but let's also see how much this cost me in order to run and make this whole app. All right, so it looks like in total, this cost me 71 cents to do that entire app. Now, that was a very simple app, 71 cents. You could kind of see that as a decent alternative to Claude Code, because Claude Code would have cost me probably like two bucks in order to create that app. So we can obviously see that this is OpenAI's response to Claude Code, and they're making something that's pretty competitive. Also, their models are getting better and better, so I I would give this a try. And with that, that is how you install and use OpenAI's CLI tool, Codex.